This is some of the newest landscape on Earth. It's a barren place. Little grows here because the ice that covers the land is easily eroded by wind and rain. But along this valley floor, you can watch nature fight its way back from devastation. This was all created when Mount St. Helens erupted. The north face of the mountain slid down the Tootle River, filling the valley, raising the floor several hundred feet. A new environment was constructed. Now, fragile grasses, dactylus, and red fescue are taking root. Common clover also dots the terrain. And with these plants have come the elk. Since the eruption and with this, the elk come in from around the surrounding areas and sit here. This is what's, this is what's unusual about it. Usually elk are creatures of habit. Elk at the lower elevations follow a circuit as they feed. Every day they move off to another location. But some of these elk are loyal residents of this valley. Looks like we got a good calf crop. A lot of calves in that group. Wildlife biologist Will Nelson began tracking the elk shortly after the mountain exploded. Early fall, they're already starting to arrive. And there's a certain number. There's about 60, 70 animals that hang out here, uh, even during the summertime. These animals are survivors of a herd that grazed in this valley each winter for thousands of years. They found shelter in the old growth Douglas fir covering the hills. In 1981, after the eruption, only 50 elk survived. The others were wiped away like the trees from the force of the explosion. A year later, the Washington Department of Wildlife and the University of Washington launched a study to ensure the survival of the herd. No one would have imagined that out of a moonscape topography left by the volcano, would come an elk paradise, even a fragile one. But within weeks after the eruption, the Army Corps of Engineers stepped in to stabilize the ravaged lands. Wildlife salvage teams started with aerial seeding of grasses. The hope was to produce ground cover to prevent erosion. I have 15 total. I'd agree with that. And did you get the bulls? I think there are three spikes and four branched. And three calves. Every fall prior to the elk season, we do uh, aerial surveys to get elk composition counts. This gives us a sense for the production, number of bulls per cows, a number of calves per cows. Gives us the structure of the population. This is the way we monitor the health of the herds. This valley's been seeded several times. It's a special mix to supply the elk with enough nutritious forage and cultivate ground cover to protect the delicate terrain. The vegetation cover is really pretty thin here. Throughout the area, there's these areas where, where the sand is just right there. Um, it's, it's a very fragile uh, plant community that exists here. It doesn't take very much to uh, expose that, and, and it's very difficult to get vegetation reestablished on those steep slopes once they've been exposed again. This valley is recognized as a significant wildlife habitat. 2,500 acres are managed by the Washington Department of Wildlife as an elk winter range. But as the herd expands and trees return, the vegetation for the elk may be insufficient. Already there is danger of overgrazing. In the spring, this area here is just smooth has a baby's bottom. I mean, it is just mowed right down. There is hardly anything left. And this is what carries them through. It's what you see standing that the elk survive on all winter. So by spring, it's pretty well mowed down. And then they leave, and then it, it revegetates. The grasses will be fertilized. Seeding will continue. To further protect the herd, public access to the range will be limited. Man is the only threat to the elk. And despite poor roads, the elk are vulnerable. Here we have a, you know, obviously a poached elk. This is way out of season. This is one of the big concerns that we have and, and why we want to try to control access on the uh, wildlife area. A new highway with viewpoints through this valley will be completed in 1993. Public access to this critical wildlife habitat will then be cut back. This is a fragile environment. It will take special care for anything to survive here. What we're watching is nature 
uh, going through its evolution from bare soil eventually to become old growth timber.